Now I want to introduce you to a very useful thing called function notation. For a function like y equals 3x plus 5, we frequently write it this way. Instead of writing y equals, we'll write it with this f parentheses x notation. And we read this as f of x, not f times x. I know that when you see the parentheses, you probably think about multiplication. But in this case, this f is not a variable or a number. It's a label that indicates that this expression is going to be called f, and the variable in this expression is an x. So f is just a name or a label for the function. The f of x notation stands in place of the y, but we're still calculating a y value. Notice that the old way we wrote it y equals 3x plus 5. Now we're writing it as f of x equals 3x plus 5. So the f of x simply takes the place of the y, but still when you plug in an x value and get a, get a number here for 3x plus 5, you're still getting a y value on your graph. Now the main reason that we like to use function notation is because if you're dealing with more than one function, you don't want them all to be called y. You'd like to have a way to tell them apart. So it helps to have names for them when we're dealing with more than one function. Usually the first one is called f for function, and usually the second one is called g, and the next one is called h if you have three. But it doesn't have to be that way. They really can have any name, but just f, g, and h are the most common ones. Now, the x is a way to keep up with what value was plugged in to get the function value. So we'll have a number here. So if I decided to plug in 1 into my function, I'd say 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 plus 5 is 8. So my function value would be 8 but I'd record the 1 here as a way just to keep up with what was plugged in that produced that answer. And you'll see as we go along. Here is just a caution note for us. Uh, this is something that a lot of people misunderstand. It says the symbol f of x does not indicate f times x, remember we mentioned that, but represents the y value associated with the indicated x value. As just shown, f of 2 is the y value that corresponds to the x value, 2. So you'll get more used to this as we go, but just remember that even though we see parentheses here, it doesn't mean f times x. Okay, we're going to practice. This is example 6. It says let f of x equal negative x squared plus 5x minus 3 and let g of x equal 2x plus 3, and we want to find each of the following and simplify if possible. Okay, so this one says f of 2. So what this means is take the f function and plug in a 2. I'll just recopy it, but everywhere it says x, I'll put in a 2. So that's going to be negative 2 squared plus 5 times 2 minus 3. Now be very careful here because we're squaring this 2 but the negative is not in parentheses so the negative is not affected by the exponent. We'll have to do 2 squared is 4 and then attach the negative in front of it. So that's going to be negative 4 plus 5 times 2 which is 10 minus 3 and then negative 4 plus 10 will be 6, and 6 minus 3 will be 3. So f of 2 equals 3. Now let's look at f of q. Well, you might not have thought about it, but we don't have to plug in a number. We can plug in another expression. So in this case, what we'll be doing is taking our f function and putting a q in the place of x. So it's going to say negative q squared plus 5 times q minus 3. f of q equals negative q squared plus 5 times q minus 3. Now if there were any simplifying to do here, like combining of terms or distributing or anything like that, we would do it, but this is not anything that can be simplified. So we'll move on to the next one. The next one says g of a plus 1. Now this means that we'll take the g function 
and everywhere we had an x, we will replace that x with a plus 1. So remember the g function is 2x plus 3. So I'll replace the x with a plus 1. So instead of 2x plus 3, it's 2 times a plus 1 plus 3. Now this can be simplified because all we have to do is distribute the 2 and then add the 3 on there. So now let's combine like terms. 2a plus 2 plus 3 becomes 2a plus 5. Here are a couple of homework problems that you can try on your own. So you have an f function here and a g function, and I want you to pause the video and try evaluating each of these expressions. Okay, let's go through it together. So we've got f of 2m minus 3. That means we'll use the f function, but wherever it had an x, we will replace x with 2m minus 3. Okay, it's going to say negative 3 times what we put in there plus 4. So negative 3 times 2m minus 3 plus 4. We'll need to distribute that negative 3 and add the 4. And now we'll need to combine like terms because we have two constants here, so negative 6m plus 13. And now let's evaluate g of negative 2. So we'll take our g function and we'll plug negative 2 into it. That's going to give us negative, negative 2 squared, plus 4 times negative 2, plus 1. Okay, now be very careful here because we do have a negative x value that we're squaring, and then we have a negative in front. Don't make the mistake of saying negative times negative is positive and then squaring that positive number. We're squaring the negative 2. And so negative 2 squared is 4, but this negative is still out there. So we're going to write negative 4, and then 4 times negative 2 is minus 8, and then plus 1. So now negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12, and negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. Now we're going to look at some different types of functions written different ways, and we're going to evaluate each function at 3. The first one is the same type of function that we just were looking at. It's a function that's represented by an equation. So if we plug in a 3, all we have is 3 times 3 minus 7, which is 9 minus 7, which is 2. So in this case, f of 3 equals 2. In part b, f is not an equation we can plug into, but f is just a list of ordered pairs. So f of 3 in this case would cause us to look at this ordered pair where x is 3, and we can see that if x is 3, y is 1. So in this case, f of 3 is 1. Here is a mapping function. So when x is 3, y is 5. In this case, f of 3 is 5. And here is a graph. So in this case, to evaluate f of 3, we need to find out what is the y value when x is 3. Well, when x is 3, it looks like the y value is 4. So in this case, f of 3 is 4. Now what we're about to do is take an equation that involves both x and y and write it in function notation. So to do that, we will solve the equation for y, and then we will replace the y with f of x. Let's see how that looks. This is example 8. It says assume that y is a function of x, rewrite each equation using function notation, and then find f of negative 2 and f of p. Okay, this first one is very simple. It says y equals x squared plus 1. It's already solved for y. So all we have to do is replace the y with the function notation. So it will say f of x equals x squared plus 1. Now to evaluate at negative 2, we will plug the negative 2 in place of the x. And now let's evaluate. Negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So in this case, f of negative 2 is 5. And if we plug a p in place of the x, f of p 
will be p squared plus 1, and there's nothing more we can do to that to simplify it. Now part b is not as simple. In part b we have x minus 4y equals 5. In this case, to get this written in function notation, we'll have to solve for y first and then replace the y with the f of x notation. So to solve this for y, let's move the x to the right side. And now let's divide each term by negative 4. And so on the left side, the negative 4s will cancel, and we'll have negative x plus 5 over negative 4. Now this is not wrong, but it is a very awkward way to write a function. So normally what we would do is multiply top and bottom by negative 1 so that the negative does not show up in the denominator. Now notice that I was not able to just cancel these negatives. It's important that you multiply the entire top and the entire denominator by negative 1 because this x is a term. And remember, we cannot simplify with terms. You can only multiply the entire top and the entire bottom by the same quantity. Now, when we distribute the negative 1 in the top, this is what we'll get. x minus 5, and in the bottom, negative 4 times negative 1 is 4. Now, isn't that much cleaner and nicer looking than what we had before? And so now it's solved for y, and all we have to do is replace the y with f of x. This is our function, written in function notation. And now let's evaluate f of negative 2. So if we do that, we'll replace every instance of x with a negative 2. And negative 2 minus 5 would be negative 7. And then negative 7 over 4 is negative 7 fourths. And then we can do f of p. And f of p is just going to be p minus 5 over 4. Here are a couple that you can try on your own. Practically the same instructions as the last two we did together. Write each equation using function notation and then find f of 3 and f of p. So take a few seconds and try these on your own. And now let's go through them together. Okay, we have here x plus 3y equals 12. This will need to be solved for y before we can write it in function notation. So let's move the x to the right side. That's going to give us 3y equals negative x plus 12. And now divide both sides by 3. And if we divide the left side by 3, of course the 3's cancel. And if we, and if we divide the right side by 3, it looks like this. And now we can replace the y with f of x. And now we can evaluate. f of 3, we'll put a 3 in place of the x. So we'll have negative 3 plus 12 over 3. Negative 3 plus 12 is 9, and 9 over 3 is 3. And now let's evaluate f of p. f of p would be negative p plus 12 over 3. And there's really not anything we can do with that, although you might make it a little prettier by writing it as 12 minus p, but it's not necessary. It wouldn't make it any simpler. And now let's look at this last one together. We have y plus 2x squared equals 3 minus x. And remember, what we're trying to do is write this in function notation, so we just need to solve it for y. I know when you first look at this and you see the x squared, it probably shakes you a little bit because you think it's fixing to be difficult, but all we're trying to do is isolate the y, and the y is just one term, so all we really have to do is move this term to the right side. Let's write y equals negative 2x squared plus 3 minus x. And now we can replace the y with the function notation. So we have f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 3 minus x. And now let's evaluate the two things that they asked us to evaluate. We'll do f of 3, and that means that we will replace the x with 3 all the way through. So we'll have f of 3 equals negative 2 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 3. Okay, let's evaluate now. 3 squared is 9, so we'll have negative 2 times 9 plus 3 minus 3. From left to right, negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus 3 gives us negative 15, and then minus 3 gives us negative 18 again. So f of 3 is negative 18. And now let's do f of p. 
So we'll just take our function and replace the x with a p. We'll have f of p equals negative 2p squared plus 3 minus p.